In the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 7, where we find ourselves today, Paul is writing to the church and kind of explaining some of his previous letters that he had shared with them. And some of those letters, they were encouraging for sure, but they were also corrective. And he's writing in this seventh chapter about those dynamics and how he's not necessarily regretful, remorseful, or sorrowful that he pointed out areas that they needed to grow in. But he's actually encouraged that that sorrow led to change. Let me say that again. He's encouraged that their sorrow led to change. Let me read something that I find very interesting about the kind of sorrow that is actually a godly sorrow. It comes from verse 10, chapter 7 of 2 Corinthians. For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, the kind we don't want, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. You see, there's a difference between being remorseful and repentant, from being sorrowful and then being settled on changing by the Spirit of God. And this is what Paul writes. He said, listen, the kind of sorrow that's truly godly, it leads to a whole nother lifestyle, a lifestyle that's centered upon the gospel. But there's a worldly sorrow, a sorrow that maybe says that it's sorry, but doesn't lead to real change. And the Bible says, the word of God encourages us. I believe Jesus calls us to simple repentance. A place in which we, by the Spirit of God, say, God, I identify that what you call sin, I call sin. And by your Spirit, I am going to step into a life of holiness, a life where I'm following you in my attitudes and actions and choices and decisions. You see, there's a worldly sorrow and a godly sorrow. Godly sorrow leads to change. Worldly sorrow just leads to sadness. And I'm so glad that God, by His mercy, by His grace, by His power, enables us to have godly repentance, godly sorrow that leads to change and ultimately to life.